So here you can see VTNet0 is LAN and VTNet1 is uh, WAN. So we can configure it by ourselves actually. So I will be entering root as a user ID because we have already done the installation. Uh, we had set up the password by ourselves when we were configuring it. Now you can see here these options in uh, PFSense also. It is looking same here because the OpenSense is built on the PFSense in fact. So PFSense was the main system on which OpenSense is built. I can say it is an advanced version or the customized version of the PFSense. So what we are going to do here, we are going to assign the interfaces. So I will press one. Do you want to configure lags now? I will say no. And VLAN now, I will not configure VLAN now. We'll do that in the web user interface. So it says that enter the WAN interface name or A for the auto. So I will be using VTNet0 for WAN. So I will do VTNet0. So it will be my uh, WAN and then enter the LAN interface. So I will do VTNet1 for the LAN. Enter the optional interface. So there is no optional interface. I will press enter. Now you can see here that uh, WAN is VTNet0 and LAN is VTNet1. Do you want to proceed? I will say yes. Now it is reconfiguring it, restarting everything. And you can see here now WAN is DHCP 10.11.12.162 and LAN is here. So I will configure this again. I will uh, set the interface IP address by myself. This is of course optional because if you have already connected the WAN uh, cable into your VTNet0, if for example, this is your uh, service provider or internet service provider gateway, from there the LAN cable will come into WAN port and then this will be going to your switch. So I will be configuring it by myself. Uh, Maybe I will give the IP address here what I need to have, uh, maybe 12.200. So what I'll do, I will just go here and set the interface IP. I will do two here. And for which you want to set the interface IP, enter the number. So number is WAN, which is two. And here, configure the address for WAN interface via DHCP. I will say no. I will be entering it by myself, 10.11.12.200. So I will set this here. And then I need to enter the IPv4 subnet bit. It is 24 bit. And then for WAN, enter the new WAN IPv4 upstream gateway. So which is 10.11.12.1. Do you want to use this particular IP address as the DNS server also? I will say yes, this is also my DNS server. And now do you want to have the address for the IPv6? I will not configure IPv6, I'll press. No, maybe you have not seen it clearly. Let me minimize my camera here. So no. Do you want to change the web GUI protocol from HTTPS to HTTP? I will say no. Generate a new self-signed web GUI certificate. I will say, okay, yes. Restore web GUI access defaults. I will say yes. Now my uh, WAN interface is configured here. Of course, I need to also configure the LAN interface. So let me change the LAN IP address also. Right now it is uh, 192.168.1.100. I will go back and set the interface IP addresses. This time I will do it for LAN. Now I'll be going for one, which is VTNet one, which is for the LAN. I will do one. Configure IPv4 address LAN interface. We need to of course configure by ourselves. So I'll press no and enter the new LAN IPv4 address. Now it all depends on you. You have to plan for it. I have planned it that I will be using 172.16.1.1. This will be my IPv4 LAN address for the OpenSense. And then it says me that what should be the subnet bit, so which will be 24 bit. So I will be entering 24 bit here. For a WAN, enter the new IPv4 upstream gateway. I am configuring LAN here. So it doesn't have any upstream gateway, of course, because WAN has the upstream gateway. I will press enter here. And here IPv6 address, I will say no. Enter the new IPv6 address. Of course, there is no IPv6 address. Why it is asking again? So do you want to enable the DHCP server on LAN? Yes, of course, we want to enable that because we want the devices to get the IP addresses automatically. Press enter, enter the range of the addresses. So I will be doing 172.16.1. Uh, I will start from 50. You can see here that we already had 172.16.1.1 as the IP address. So that's why I'm choosing the IP range from 172.16.1.50. And what will be the end? range so it will be 172.16.1. Uh, maybe 150 so 100 addresses will be fine and then set the web gui default i will do yes and finally you can see here now you can access the web gui 
by typing the IP address 172.16.1.1. So our system is now ready. Now we are ready to plug this into our network. So how you have to plug? You need to make sure that your WAN is connected here uh, to this particular port and your LAN is connected here. If it is a physical, of course, device, so whatever cable is coming from the internet service provider's router, of course, it has its WAN cable which comes to the service provider routers and from there, the LAN cable has to come into WAN and from OpenSense, LAN cable has to go to your switch. In the virtual environment, of course, uh, many of you have asked me question that how you are going to use one single network interface card. So I'll be going here to hardware. And in hardware, I, I have already shown you that VMBR0 is used as WAN. So I will be also using VMBR0 as LAN. So one network interface cards is, card is used for both the purposes. So what I'm going to do, I have an existing firewall on my network. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to disable the DHCP server over there. I will go here to DHCP instead of enable DHCP. I will disable it now so that only one DHCP works on my network, which is the OpenSense. As you can see, OpenSense is running right now and it is my DHCP server as of now and as it is connected on the same network. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to disconnect the Wi-Fi, which is having the IP address 10.11.12. something. So I will be just disconnecting it and the moment I connect it again, it will now start getting the IP address the new CP server. Let me try to ping 1716.1.1. It has got, in fact, the IP address from there and it is pinging now. So I can now access 172.16.1.1. Enter. Here you can see OpenSense is now ready. I can just simply log in with my user ID and password. Now the OpenSense is ready to be configured. So I'll give you a basic idea of what OpenSense is and then we will move and we will configure from the very basic configuration to the advanced configuration. So let us continue to next video now.